สาดุสาดุสาดุนโมทัสเซบาเกตุอะระหะตุสัมมาสัมบุตเสนโมทัสเซบาเกตุอะระหะตุสัมมาสัมบุตเสนโมทัสเซบาเกตุอะระหะตุสัมมาสัมบุตเสสัมเบปาปัสเซอะเกเรนัมคุเซลัสเซอุเปสัมเปดังสัจินเตปาริโยดาเฟนัมเอตังบุตดานสัสเซนังเดี๋ยวเพื่อนสินดัมมะเชเดยูอาเซเลบรตินเดบุตดัสเบอร์เดย์เวสักเฮนเดย์แอคชั่นลีเวสักเดย์เซเวอร์อิมพอร์ตันเดย์ฟอร์บุริสม Because we celebrate uh, the three auspicious events, occasions of Buddha's life, Buddha's birth, his enlightenment, and passing away. Especially, you know, Buddha was born as an ordinary human being, but after he became, he attained enlightenment, uh, he became an extraordinary person. When he attained enlightenment. Uh, what happened to him uh, when his enlightenment, you know, he eradicated his all defilements in his mind. What are the defilements? So evil thoughts, so negative thoughts in our mind. There are some negative thoughts which arise in our mind that disturb our peace of mind. What they are? Greed. Yes, greed. Uh, anger and delusion, or craving, anger and delusion. These are the three unwholesome roots, unwholesome thoughts which arise in uh, our mind. Actually, these are the real enemies in our life. Hmm? Buddha recognized these enemies in his mind, and he decreased these uh, defilements from his mind when he attained enlightenment. And especially, uh, we should understand what Buddha taught. That is the very important thing. Even though he was born as an uh, ordinary human being, after he became enlightenment, we don't say he is a human being. He is a Buddha. Buddha means who attain enlightenment, uh, who develop his mind, uh, you know, loving kindness and wisdom. He developed his mind to the maximum level with loving kindness and wisdom. And here, especially, uh, I have given you an uh, article uh, consist uh, with Buddha's main doctrines. Especially, I have given you a stanza, uh, poem, or verse in Buddhism in Pali language. What is the Buddha's language? Uh, yes, Pali. But they explain this message in Pali language. Pali is an ancient language in India. You know, there are very ancient languages in in the world. You know what they are? Sanskrit. Yes, Sanskrit, Pali, Hebrew, Latin, Greek. These are the very ancient languages in the world. You know, when we see some doctrines in Christianity. Uh, we find some text in Hebrew language. When we find some canonians, canonians, uh, Hindus, they are in Sanskrit language. And Buddhist uh, materials we can see in Pali language. And because they are very ancient languages. Especially here, the stanza that I have given here in Pali, Sabba Papa Sakaranam Kusala Supa Sambada Sajitta Pariyodapanam Etang Buddhana Sasanam. Have you heard this stanza? Yes. yes. Everyone should learn by heart this stanza. You know, when somebody asks you, uh, what do you know about Buddhism? Then this is the answer. Okay? You should learn by heart this stanza. That is very important. Not only Buddhism, that you should know, but there are main religions in the world. What are the main religions in the world? Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, 
and Buddhism. Uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. These are the five main religions in the world. Okay? You should not only know Buddhism, but you know what, Buddh- what Hinduism is, what Christianity is, what Islam is. That is also very important. You know, educated people, they know the summary of those uh, religions. Okay? This is the summary of Buddhism. What Buddha explained to the world? Buddha says, Sabba Papa Sakaranam, not to do evil. Why is that Buddha said like this? What are the uh, evils? What we do with impure mind? Yes, uh, physically, mentally, or verbally, those are evils. And uh, why don't we do this kind of evils? Why would they explain, why would they advise not to do evil? What is the reason? Uh, when we steal, when we tell lies, when we kill others, what happens to our mind? Yes, our mind is polluted. We have no inner peace. Uh, we, lost our, we lose our inner peace when we do negative thoughts, when we do negative deeds, evil, evil deeds. That is why we should overcome. That is why we should not to do evil for the security of our own mind. Sometimes people don't do these things because of some regulations and rules. They are afraid of uh, police or someone. <laughs> but <laughs> we should not do these things because of, because of security of our own mind. We should protect our mind. If our mind is impure, actually we have no inner peace. We do everything for our inner peace. We should protect our inner peace. That is why we should not do uh, telling lies, stealing, uh, you know, uh, killing others. When we do these things, actually we lose our inner peace. That is why Buddha kindly kindly advise us not to do evil. And also as the result of doing evil, hmm, we are suffering in this life and also end of this life we will be suffering. And also after we leave this life, Buddhism believes the reincarnation, then after here, when we go to the next life, we will be suffering. That is why we should not do this evil. That is Buddha's first advice, Sabha Papa Sakarana. Okay? The second one is uh, doing good. Buddha advises us to do good. What are the good deeds? What are the good deeds that we do in our life? Yes, helping others, offering something to others, morality, moral life, and meditation. Those are the good deeds. What should we do good deeds? Why should we practice good deeds in our life? What is the reason? Doing good deeds means the real blessings in our life. Buddha says, I think you have heard Mangala Sutta, the discourse of blessings. Practicing generosity is one of the blessings in our life. Taking care of our elder parents is one of the blessings in our life. Gratitude is a blessing in our life. Listening to Dhamma is one of the blessings. And Nyata Khan and Sangho, if we help our relatives, that is also one of the blessings. You know, ordinary people uh, find some blessings from outside. But actually, according to Buddhism, we can find blessings from outside. We generate blessings in our life, in our mind. We monks only prepare the situation to get bless uh, to you. But you should generate blessings in your mind by yourself. Okay? When you practice generosity, 
when you offer, when you give something to your friend, pen or book, then your mind is so pure. It is blessing for you. You are blessed. And also when we take care of our elder parents, then we generate positive thoughts in our mind. We are so happy. That is why Buddha says, practicing good means um, practicing happiness. If we do good merits, more merits means more happiness. No merits, no happiness. More merits, more happiness. And there are a lot of things that we can do in the name of happiness as merits, meritorious deeds. Okay? All good thoughts, all meritorious deeds can be included into three. What they are? Yes, very good. Three meritorious deeds. Generosity, morality, and meditation. Generosity means we are always ready to offer something to others. You know, in Asian countries, especially in Buddhist countries like, you know, Thailand, Burma, Sri Lankan, when they eat something, they offer something to nearby. Why is that? Without offering something to others, they never eat something. They are they practice generosity. Sometimes if they are alone, they are waiting for someone until they come to eat with them. That is our tradition. And everywhere we practice generosity. Hmm? At home, uh, you can uh, give something to your pet, hmm? like cats or dogs who are in your home, then you can offer something. If uh, your grandparents are at home, you can help them. And also you can offer something to Buddha every day. Drink, flower or incense. When they offer those things to Buddha, we purify our mind. By practicing generosity, by practicing morality and by practicing meditation, we purify our mind. The way of happiness is purify in our mind. Okay? Always we purify our mind. And you know these doctrines are very important. Why is that? In Buddha's time, Buddha said that what is the uh, minimum age that someone can realize this message? Seven. Seven. Yes. In Buddha's time, there were some arahantas who attained enlightenment at the age of seven. I think all of you are over seven. Okay? It means... <laughs> it means you are ready to realize this message. Yeah? Even though physically you are young, mentally you are not young. There are three ages. You know, there are three ages. What they are? Physical age, mental age and spiritual age. Physical age means when you were born. And the mental age, what age that you are thinking about you. Sometimes there are some people he, he thinks that he is over uh, lower uh, seven. <laughs> his, <laughs> his mental age is so young. And uh, what is the spiritual age? That is the very important thing. Yes, wisdom. Uh, how far we develop our wisdom? That is the very important thing. Even though some people are very young physically, even though physical, their physical age is very few, a little, but their spiritual age is very high. You also sometimes, yes? Age and spiritual, age. spiritual age and mental age are different. Mental age means what age that we are thinking. For example, uh, there is someone who is uh, 20, he may think that I am 40. Uh, mentally he is so weak. That is his mental age. But his spiritual age is diff different. He is very clever to uh, realize something. You know, uh, he cannot be um, disturbed by someone. It means he doesn't depend on material things. 
Nobody can disturb his inner peace. It means his spiritual age is very high. So mentally you might be smart, and, but spiritually you don't know how to give of, give of yourself. Yes, that's so correct. I could be a brain and have mm. no compassion for someone. Yes, compassion. someone, sometimes we can see some people are very strong physically, uh, but mentally, yes, yes, suddenly they fall down. Yes, very when their close relatives die, they yes, they are so sad, very they are crying. Even though there are some people who are, who are bodybuilders, but they are very strong physically, but mentally they are um, boyfriend or no, they are girlfriend uh, and doesn't lie, lives with him, <laughs> he falls down, he falls down. <laughs> His spiritual age is very low. Yes, that is the difference. And Buddha always encourages us to increase our spiritual age. How do we improve our spiritual age? Yes, the first one is listening to Dhamma and reflecting Dhamma and practice Dhamma. Listening, reflecting and listening. These three things are very important. What they are? Listening Dhamma, reflecting Dhamma and practicing Dhamma. The first stage is knowledge. Knowledge is wealth. Knowledge is very important. What is the knowledge? We should understand what Buddha explained. On the other side, according to what we are listening, we should reflect in again and again in our day-to-day -day life. You know, there are some people, even though they paid their attention very well, but after they are listening to them, they don't reflect it. Then their knowledge is useless. And also, not only reflecting, we should realize this message throughout practice in meditation, samatha and vipassana, tranquility and insight in meditation. That is also very important. And here, we are talking how we increase our spiritual age. That is our real wealth. When we develop our spiritual age, five spiritual faculties gradually increase. There are five spiritual faculties in Buddhism. What they are? Five spiritual, five spiritual faculties. It's like the chakras. Five yes, Saddha, confidence in the Buddha's enlightenment, Virya, energy, Sati, mindfulness, Samadhi, tranquility, Panya, wisdom. Confidence, energy, Mindfulness, tranquility, effort, 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 or strength, strength, and wisdom. When we develop our spiritual age, these five qualities gradually increase. You know, when a Buddha meets a person, suddenly he focuses that person's mind, how far he has uh, developed these qualities in his previous life. This is a very special knowledge of Buddha. It says in Buddhism, uh, Indriya paro pariyati jnana. Indriya means sadhari Indriya. Only the Buddha has. Right? Yes, only Buddha has. Yeah. Even Sariputta, who was the most intelligent disciple of the Buddha, even he had this understanding. Only the Buddha had this understanding. Yeah. What is it, the ability to read people's minds? Mind. Yeah, Not community. only read mind, but how far he has increased mm -hmm. these five spiritual faculties in his previous life. Mm -hmm. You know, Parakita Vijayanjana is the other one. We can read your mind. What is the, your present first position? What you are thinking just now? I can develop that psychic energy. But this quality is different. Indriya Paravapadhyatnyana is diff different. In the far past. Yes, yeah, yes. He compared all previous lives. Yeah. Then that is a very difficult thing. Yeah. That has yeah. only to the Buddha. Yeah. But uh, Cheto Paryanyana can be uh, developed by Arahant. But the Indriya Paravapadhyatnyana, that the, the ability to read his spiritual faculties is only for the Buddha. That is a very special psychic energy that Buddha had. 
Okay? Actually, these are the faculties that we should increase day by day. And here, that is very important. And uh, the third advice that Buddha says, purify one's mind. Sajita Pariyodapanam. What is the difference between doing good and purifying mind? That is very important. This is the place that you can show you a skill. Okay? You can do good without purifying your mind. Mm -hmm. You can offer something, but if your mind is not pure... Yes, very good. Very good. Pure means specifically focus on ignorance. How do we overcome ignorance? You know, when Buddha was appeared in the world, there were some people who were there, who had eradicated their anger and craving. But they hadn't decreased their ignorance or delusion. You know, by doing good deeds, we practice three meritorious deeds with the understanding of karmic law. It is enough the understanding of karmic law in the uh, doing good level. But we are still in the samsaric circle. What is, why, this, why is that? Ignorance. Yes, very good. Avidya Pacha Sankhara. Mental formations arise because of ignorance. We can do something with ignorance which are good. You know, when we offer something to others, if we think there is some permanent person outside, we can practice generosity, but, but we are not aware from ignorance. Because we think that there is someone outside. It doesn't mean that there are nothing outside. Actually, there are something outside, but only four fundamental elements. If you find there is my dad, there is my brother, it means I am ignorant. There are no fathers, no children outside. Only four fundamental elements. For example, if you see this daughter, you may think that this is my daughter. When I see this girl, I think this is our devotee. When someone, like you know, like uh, lion or some animal. When a lion sees this girl, lion thinks that this is a good diet for me, <laughs> for my lunch. <laughs> Actually, in the outside, there are no children, no diets, nothing. So you're in talking the about the you're talking about the uh, conventional truth the conventions we have, the naming and everything, and then the absolute truth is the other part. Yes. Doing good depends on the conventional truth. Purifying one's mind is depend on, it depends on the absolute truth. Ultimate truth. Yeah. It is very important. When we do some good deeds in the name of a blissful life hereafter, actually we depend on the karmic law, the conventional truth. Even karmic law depends on conventional truth, not ultimate truth. Mm. I didn't understand. Yes, that is the that is the deep deep concept in Buddhism. <laughs> you know, if you do something good deed, for example, you practice generosity here, you offer dana to Mahasanga, you think that as a result of offering something to Mahasanga, I will have a blissful life hereafter. It it is true, but only in the conventional truth. According to ultimate truth, only four actually we have only the present moment. We have only the present thought. It doesn't mean that we will not be reborn. Actually we will be reborn. Birth depends on conventional truth. When we overcome conventional truth, it means we have overcome birth. And purifying one's mind means purifying our mind from ignorance. You know, when Buddha appeared in the world, there were some people who believed karmic law. The karmic law is not a special topic in Buddhism. Why is that? Before Buddha appeared in the world, 
there were a lot of people, especially in India, they had realized the karmic law. But they didn't realize the nature of ignorance or delusion. A Buddha appears in the world to describe ignorance. Before Buddha appeared in the world, there were many people who eradicated anger and lust for a long time, but they didn't understand ignorance. That is why they couldn't overcome the samsaric circle. And as the result of good activities, they will they have a blissful life hereafter, but they didn't realize the enlightenment or the cessation from suffering, the cessation from samsaric circle. That is why here purifying one's mind means purifying our mind from ignorance. When you, you say are, the ignorance, you are saying about the not seeing the reality as it is. Yes, which is we will the describe it. Element, yes, that is very important. You know, we can do some good deeds. Hmm? which depend on ignorance. For example, when I offer something to this girl, I think there is a girl outside, then I can offer something. End of my life, when I think this activity, I can be reborn in a blissful life. But after I will be reborn, I am not away from aging, decay, death and suffering. If we born again, we are not away from suffering. Buddha's highest advice, how we eradicate, how we overcome the samsaric circle. And here, this is the place that you can understand. Your skillfulness, your proficiency completely depends on understanding ignorance. Now I explain a little, okay? What is the delusion, what is the ignorance? That Buddhism says. According to ultimate truth or the supramundane level, that we have no ready-made things outside. In the conventional truth, there are ready-made things, ready-made clothes, ready-made joys, joys we can see in the conventional truth. But when we go to the supramundane level, the ultimate truth, there are no ready-made things in the world. We create our thoughts at the moment. When we look at something, we create this experience at the moment according to our present mental condition. For example, now when you look at me, you are happy. When I blame you suddenly, when you look at me, you are angry. (laughs) And this wall, look at this wall. Now you can see a wall. When there is a person here who is watched, This is not a wall for him. He can go through the wall. This wall is, this wall belongs to me. This wall belongs to my senses, my spheres, my senses. This world is seen according to my present mental conditions. My perception is my reality. Yes, that is good. My perception depends on my ignorance, my karmic law my present mental condition. When my present mental condition changes, suddenly the things that I experience change at the moment. I can give you an example that in Buddha's time uh, there was a person, a hunter, who killed a deer in the forest. He killed a, a deer mom. And as soon as he killed that deer, Actually, that person was very thirsty. He went to the jungle finding water. And he went to a forest, uh, you know, uh, where Buddhist monks were living. Then he, f- uh, <coughs> he found water everywhere. He, he saw some person, but he couldn't see water. Then he blamed those monks. Bhante, where is water? Why you can't keep some water in person? He blamed all monks. Then monks saw that water is full of person. 
but that person can see world because of his bad karma that is the reason mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the world that we created at the moment according to our present mental condition when our senses change according to our mental condition then suddenly the the world that we experience at the mo- moment change in the spiritual world in our uh, supra mundane level in the ultimate truth actually there are no ready made things in outside we always create some things according to our present mental conditions that is why you know there were some gods who were born near near a lake sometimes they were for a long time near a lake when we look at the water in the lake they see like blood mm. other people go to the lake and bring some water and they drink but those gods can drink water when we look at the, when they look at the water they see that water as blood they were thirsty for a long time actually this is the reality that buddha realized that buddha discovered and he proclaimed to the world so the karma change can change the senses yes the karma senses. not only karma no. karma and present mental condition mm. our ignorance those no, are the reasons the that change our spheres senses so like the But, shan, so like the shan he said to me earlier he goes I don't like no price. Mm-hmm. I love no price. <laughs> <laughs> But it's his perception mm-hmm. that it's a bad thing. I love it. It's my perception. Yes. The thing is, the yeah. thing is when so, we go to the higher level actually uh-huh. we don't find uh, material things or persons outside. Right. Yeah. So it's just as soon as we look at something we look at inside. Mm-hmm. Now we focus on outside. Yeah. We always look at outside. but buddha buddha advised us how we look at inside like you know when we go to the mirror we never keep our hand to the mirror if we want to comb our hair we put comb here we never keep comb there why is that we are knowledgeable we know very well and the object is here like that when we experience something through our senses actually we don't respond others we understand the reason reason is here if we find people or things in the external world it means we are not away from suffering why is that when those things and persons change we are not away from suffering we are suffering if you find your daughter outside it means your daughter is when your daughter is sick you are crying because you think that my daughter is external world and if you are knowledgeable if you are wise to look at inside my daughter is created myself by myself your daughter is your daughter belongs to your world your daughter the concept of your daughter doesn't belong to my world and this is the highest reality that buddha realized and he explained to the world and uh, if we can understand first of all we should have this understanding and then we reflect on it again and again and finally buddha said that how we realize how we achieve this goal how we achieve this understanding we have to practice samatha and vipassana especially we should practice mindfulness buddhism explains not only mindfulness and mindful meditation too buddhism explains not only mindfulness but mindful meditation you know a lot of people in the world current society they explain practice mindfulness mm. you know a lot of psychiatrists for stress management they recommend you to practice mindfulness what they say 
they say please forget your past forget your future right. keep your mind in the present moment yeah. it is buddhism mm-hmm. no it is oh, not buddhism no, because of that if it is buddhism actually small children and animals are enlightened people enlightened person yeah. why is that think about the present they are in the present moment they don't think think their past and future Buddhism explains not only mindfulness but mindful meditation. Now, when he says mindful meditation, is that actually formal meditation when you're sitting? Not only formal meditation. Yeah. We should understand the concept. That is very important. Mindfulness means living in the present moment. Mindful meditation means reflecting on impermanence. Yeah, the insight part of it. Insight development. development of insight it doesn't need even you know it doesn't need to um, sit in a particular posture sometimes while we are walking we can reflect on mindful meditation mm-hmm. not only sit in meditation that every hour we can practice in our four postures uh, sitting walking lying down standing. standing in four postures we can practice both of them not only particular posture the the important thing is understanding the difference between mindfulness and mindful meditation what is the mind actually our real understanding depends on understanding the difference between mindfulness and mindful meditation what is the mindfulness keeping our attention in the present moment with the awareness of our body and mind and uh, what is mindful meditation reflecting on how far i am first. yes reflecting on impermanence impermanence yes reflecting on impermanence what is the impermanence i is impermanent what is the meaning of i is impermanent is this i it's never the same from moment to moment yes yes very good the 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 i that would be explained cannot be seen this is not the i this is the place that we can use for our seeing the i that buddha explained cannot be seen we can see body but we can see i i is the ability of seeing that i arises at the moment that i didn't come to the present from the past that i will not go to future from the present i ear nose skin body and mind all six senses are not permanent they arise at the moment with the conditions when conditions are together the senses arise then immediately when conditions are separated the experience is so you are saying for the eye we have to have the light right to see and the object and then you have the physical eye you have the yes there are several conditions is attention yes so, yeah, attention so, also very important see, not only for there are 10 things oh. there are 10 things not only for all of yes please okay sure sure actually yeah mom and he needs to go the uh-huh. heat cannot he can tolerate the heat uh-huh. too much Okay. So for all six hmm. things we have a ten things that attached to it like yes, for the eyes actually, we have a all ten arise at the moment oh all ten yes. arise it has oh. for each and everything for the eye yes. separately for yes. the eye ear nose and yeah all. actually eye and forms depends on conventional truth actually we can't understand through our eye we have only the shadow when we look at something when you understand this is a cup this is juice mm-hmm. actually you understand not through your eye you recognize oh, this through, through, through your mind them, yeah, through your mind yeah. you have only colors through your eyes when you recognize this is a cup this is table you understand through your mind not through your eye that's why all the other celestial beings they may even see the same thing because they have only the mind right and even like somebody like during the surgery some mm. people say they have surgery and mm. they from the top they have looked 
every all the doctors yes yes actually even though our five senses uh, don't work we can see something through our mind for example when you see a dream the sixth sense yeah when you see, when you when you see a dream mm. there is a person uh, who came to you <laughs> with a very uh, red cloth mm. after you wake up you can remind it mm. there is a person who came mm. to me with a red cloth mm. did you see the red color through your eye No. no no you through mind that's why you say even though our five senses don't work we can recognize something through our mind when someone uh, says something in your dream after you wake up you can remember it did you listen it through your eye through your ear no mind has a very special ability that anything it can get that is the nature of our mind actually not only in dreaming for somewhere but in this moment also if you recognize something if you recognize this is a recorder actually you recognize this recorder through your mind not through your eyes when you recognize this recorder the first experience that you gain through your eye has is this because mind is so fast we think just now you recognize me actually when you recognize me as a monk you recognize not through your eyes you recognize me through your mind but however mind is so fast we think that just now i am listening to this uh, monk's speech but you recognize my speech through your mind when you recognize my speech or my behavior or my figure the first, first experience has ceased and if if you can understand this reality actually always we depend on insight it means we don't depend on external world it means we are away from suffering buddhism explains that how we depend on insight buddha says atta deepa bhikkhu vihara tatsarna dwell with yourself as an island with no other refuge if you find refuge external world actually you are helpless you need to find peace inside mm mm-hmm. yeah. yes we should find peace inside it means if we can keep our attention reflecting on impermanence at the moment we don't depend on material things it means we are aware away from suffer suffering it doesn't mean that you don't take care of your children actually you can take care of your children better than you do just now after this ex- experience now you feed your children only with material things but after you have this experience you take care of your children not only food but food for mind mm-hmm. and you are you are hurry to give this understanding to your children why is that this is the way to overcome suffering even though you give good education to your daughter actually it doesn't helpful to overcome her suffering it helps to make suffering <laughs> <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes it increases suffering but this understanding helps her to overcome suffering and if we have this understanding actually then we are so compassionate to others we are hurry to help others with dhamma now we help others only with material things but buddhism explains us how we help others with dhamma that is the best gift that is why buddha says sampadanam dhamma dhanam jinati eh gift of dhamma excels all other gifts gift of dhamma excels all other gifts mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. then this is the way actually if you have children actually they were they were born in this world to realize this reality you should help them 
you should uh, prepare the situation, you should arrange the environment to realize this message to them. That is the highest gift that you can give to your children. Okay, here we were describing very important things that uh, we explain uh, the conventional truth, doing good, that depend on the conventional truth. With the understanding of the karmic law, you should practice dana, seal and bhavana, generosity, moral conduct and meditation. And with the understanding of the dependent origination, what is some father? The understanding of impermanence, arising and ceasing. Not being occurred comes to occurrence. Being occurred will not go to occurrence. Every moment, five aggregates arise and cease at the moment. Whatever we experience through our senses, it means five aggregates at the moment arise. Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankar, Vinyana. Those five things arise at the moment, not only they arise, but immediately they cease. That is the highest understanding. Buddha says, as an intelligent person, the highest education that Buddha has given is understanding five aggregates. Sancho Padana comes. And also Buddha says, as an intelligent person, the highest thing that you should give up are ignorance and craving. And again Buddha says, as an intelligent person, the highest qualities that you should increase, develop in your life are tranquility and insedimentation. This is the place that you can show your skillfulness. That is why actually when I uh, speak uh, uh, Buddhist sermons, I say that Buddhist GPA, great point average, and Buddhist IQ. What is Buddhist GPA? Buddhist GPA, the duration of tranquility, concentration meditation, Samatha Bhavana. If you can increase the duration of practicing tranquility meditation, that is our great point average. Not only GPA that Buddhism says, but IQ too. What is Buddhist IQ? The duration of reflecting on impermanence. Day by day. Day by day, we should increase the duration of tranquility and insight meditation. It means we increase our GPA and IQ. Okay? For that I wish you all the best. Okay, now you can participate to the Buddha Puja, okay? Offering Buddha Puja. Hmm? Thank you for your listening. All the blessings be with you. May all beings be well and happy.